welcome. I'm Carrie Bro from TwoRosehealing.com, where you'll find information for transformation because knowledge is power and power to take positive control over your life. And today, I want to talk about digestive enzymes versus probiotics. I find people get these confused all the time. So I am going to share a PowerPoint with you, and we'll talk about this. So. Digestive enzymes versus probiotics. Well, in a nutshell, digestive enzymes are what you need to break down food into smaller pieces. And probiotics are the garden for your gut. So let's talk about digestion and what actually happens. So you start thinking about food, you start smelling food, and the digestive process starts. You start secreting enzymes in your mouth. You have salivary amylase in your saliva, which starts to actually break down simple sugars and carbohydrates. But the real process then begins when you start to chew. You start to break the food down into smaller pieces by chewing it. And then when you swallow, you send a wave all the way down through the whole digestive system that is like a signal. So as that wave starts to come down through the food tube or the esophagus and go into your stomach. And the stomach senses that and it starts to make, you know, you start feeling your gut rumble, you start making digestive juices. And those are the acids of digestion. Stomach needs to be very acidic to break down. All right, so what happens next? Why do we digest? We have to break foods down so we can reassemble them. For instance, protein foods are made up of amino acids that get disassembled and then reassembled back into you. So proteins make up your muscle mass, enzymes, antibodies, and they're very important for growth and repair of cells. That's just one thing, that's, that's a very, very important nutrient. So what happens? The chewed food goes down this esophagus into the stomach. And I like this one picture because it shows you this whole big mass in the middle. This is your small intestine. Okay, after the food leaves the stomach, there's a few things that happen that help break it down further. But basically, let's just think about this. It goes through this mass of sausage looking tubes. And from here, the food is made into smaller and smaller parts and it's absorbed into little tiny areas or microvilli. They, um, basically take it into this little, these little teeny things, and then it goes into the bloodstream and then into the liver to be humanized. And then what is left goes into the large intestine, this big thing here on the outside, right over there. This is a large bowel or colon. So what happens with this? So what comes into here is mainly fiber, water, electrolytes, uh, a lot of the, what we're gonna see is waste, but it works its way through here. And if you notice that the, the way it looks, it's got these um, uh, bulby shapes, okay? So what these are are muscles. And then that wave that we said comes down here when you start to chew and swallow, it continues all the way down and it moves this food or food particles or um, fibrous mass along until it finally works its way outside of the body. I mean, it works its way down to the very end and then you poop it out. So very, very interesting process that we do every day. We don't even really think about it. We take it for granted. All right, so back to the stomach. Here's that food tube, the, the esophagus as it comes down. And there's a sphincter uh, valve here. Let's think about your lips. Um, you know, so you could make it real tight um, or open. So normally this is closed. And when the food comes down and the, this starts to relax, this opens and it allows this to, to come into this. Now, what is this stuff? This is the digestive juices. This is acid. If the food drops in here, it's going to be like, it's going to dissolve, hopefully. So as your body senses food and that wave comes down, the lining of this, there's all these little cells in here that secrete acid. It's the acid's not like always in here. It, it comes in more when you digest the food. So these little cells all that, you know, line all this secrete acids of digestion. That's the whole, you know, process. That's the whole reason the food comes in here. So this is where somebody would probably need digestive enzymes because the one, you're not making enough 
but let's look at the reasons why you're not making this. So we already said this is a very acidic substance, and mainly this is made up of, uh, well, there's a lot of different acids, but hydrochloric acid is one of the main ones that the stomach secretes to break down foods. So if the stomach isn't acid enough, it's not going to get the signal to create other little components to break down other parts of the food. So let's talk about that. All right, well, just about later while I put this here, your stomach isn't the only part of the digestive system that, that needs enzymes. There's other ones that come in later from the pancreas that further break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. But I want to make this simple today. So four main digestive enzymes. In here, we need things to help break down proteases and peptides into proteins. Or, I mean, the, from, they split the proteins into these smaller pieces. You know, fats are broken, you know, lip, lipase breaks fats down, amylase breaks the carbohydrates down into simple sugars, you know, breaks down starches and it breaks, starch is just a complicated sugar. So it's breaking that down into smaller, smaller pieces, glucose. Nuclease breaks down the nucleic acids. We can also put cellulase would break down the cell, the plant cells of, of fiber, you know, in plant foods. And all of your vegetables, usually fruits, have the, the cell wall that's holding them in. Um, so cellulase would break that down. And if you notice, these words here, these enzy enzymes, end in ASE. Protease, peptidase, lipase, amylase. So an ACE is the key to let you know that that is an enzyme. Enzymes break things down. All right. So we already talked about those, those, and you will see this a lot too in digestive enzyme formulas, betaine hydrochloride. Now, betaine hydrochloride is not an enzyme. It is a substance that increases acidity in the stomach. The stomach needs to be acid so it can trigger those cells in its lining to secrete those other components needed to break down foods. So we need the stomach to be acid. People tend to think acid is bad. If your overall condition of the pH of your body is acid, that's not good. But there's different parts of our digestion and our bodies that need to be acid. Our stomach needs to be acid. Our colon needs to be acid. And then it's interesting, the organs um, before and after are alkaline. So say your mouth is more alkaline, your stomach goes acid, your small intestine goes alkaline, and your large intestine goes acid. And there's reasons for this, very fascinating. But betaine hydrochloride, betaine is a, it's a compound. And when this hits water, it breaks us apart. The betaine does one thing. Betaine is also really good for homocysteine problems, but another lecture on that. So the chloride, the hydrochloride in this helps, you know, when you digest this and it mixes with water, it helps to secrete, um, the, it helps the stomach make more hydrochloric acid which then makes other acids to help break down the food. This sometimes is just enough. But you will also see betaine hydrochloride with the different other different enzymes, with some of these in a digestive enzyme. You might see protease, lipase, amylase, along with betaine hydrochloride. All right, old time um, remedies for digestive problems was apple cider vinegar. So we know that this is acidic. It has acetic acid, which, which, is, um, which stimulates the stomach's production of hydrochloric acid. That's just what we just said that, that helps, you know, break down food. It also has malic acid, which, you know, helps people with low stomach acid. So this kind of kicks it in gear. And this was an old time remedy, taking, oh, what, about a tablespoon and a little bit of water with a pinch of salt before a meal, I believe was the remedy to help increase digestibility. That sometimes is, is enough. So when your body can't make the digestive juices um, because the stomach's not acid enough, that's when digestive enzyme or increasing the acidity or both is very helpful. All right, you can think of the enzymes themselves as little workers. So the enzymes, the enzyme supplement will break down foods into the smaller building blocks. Again, the protease enzyme breaks down foods, the proteins into amino acids, the carbohydrates, enzyme breaks down starches to simple sugars, lipase, 
enzyme breaks down fats into smaller fatty acids. <clears throat> and then lactase, if you have trouble with digesting lactose, which found in dairy products, um, it breaks down other sugars. So just remember though, our whole goal is to increase the acidity of the stomach so it can make these enzymes on its own. But in the meantime, a digestive enzyme formula helps while the stomach is doing this. And these enzymes are needed, or I should say there's certain nutrients that are needed to make these enzymes in the stomach. You know, it needs chlorine, it needs zinc, it needs calcium, you know, mainly minerals to break down, you know, to make these um, enzymes to break down food. So a little catch 22, but this, again, remember what we're doing, the digestive enzymes or apple cider vinegar or betaine hydrochloride, what we're doing is trying to help increase the function of the stomach, the digestibility or the acid content of the stomach. All right, now probiotics. Probiotics are live microorganisms or they're in a freeze-dried state, so to speak. So this is, think about them like um, little bags of seeds you're going to plant in your garden. So there's different microorganisms that live in different places in the gut. So probiotics, what, what are they? So some common symptoms could be low energy, immune health problems, bloating, gas, irritable bowel syndrome, skin issues like acne and eczema, because the gut is so important with our immune system, with maintaining the integrity between our internal environment and our external environment. So when our, our gut is, you know, where most of the immune system is. So in our gut, we have good bacteria and we have our bad bacteria, our good probiotics and bad, um, bad things that live there. And we want, there's always going to be both, but we want the good bacteria to outweigh the amount of bad bacteria that's, that's in there. All right, what is this made out of? So there's a thousand, maybe, or more, more or less, species of different bacteria in the human gut microbiome. And each of these, you know, they do different functions in the body. Probiotics occur naturally in, in foods that people eat. Common fermented foods people have eaten have been yogurt, sauerkraut, sourdough, sour cream, Tabasco sauce, fish sauce, kimchi, miso, pickles, kombucha, kefir. A lot of these have are in different cultures. You know, like in the Orient, there's you know soy sauce, um, in Northern uh, Europe, you know, there's sauerkraut. Different places have sourdough. Basically, these have all been ways that people have kept their guts healthy by supplying these different probiotics naturally and with the diet. All right, types of probiotics. You might have heard of some of these. Lactobacillus. This is a common one uh, that you'll find in yogurt and other fermented foods. These strains help people with, you know, with um, diarrhea or that have the... Um, that, that can't digest lactose and milk sugar. Also, there are, is bifidobacterium. This is one of the main, uh, the, one of the main functions of this one is to digest fiber and other complex carbohydrates that your body can't digest on its own. When they digest fiber, these beneficial bacteria produce short chain fatty acids. These compounds play a number of roles in the health of the gut and may also help control hunger. This type you might have heard of. This one is Lactobacillus acidophilus. I think this is probably the most common one that people have heard of. It lives mainly in the upper gut. So this one's found in fermented foods like yogurt and other supplements. Um, a lot of the fermented dairy products you'll find acidophilus in. This has also been used to treat lactose intolerance, Crohn's disease, overgrowth of bacteria in the intestines or the vaginal yeast infections um, in women. So basically digestive enzymes, you're thinking the, about them as helping your body to digest and break down the foods you eat while you're increasing the acidity of your stomach. Or if you're handling a, a gut issue where there's maybe ulcerations in the stomach, you're helping heal it by taking some digestive enzymes. And then the role of probiotics, think about them as planting your internal 
intestinal garden with beneficial flora. So I hope that you have found that this was interesting and can tell the difference between increasing your digestibility and using a probiotic. All right, visit Two Rose Healing for more information for transformation and enjoy.